So a man has to ask himself in this quit position, what would Simo do? Win. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am out here today in Finland for Finnish Brutality 2021. Uh, this is the Winter War edition. After several Finnish brutalities being held in the summer, this year we decided to do one in the winter. It will have skis, it will have sledges, it will of course have kettlebells. Unfortunately, because of COVID restrictions, the match as a public event had to be cancelled about a month before well, before now, before it was to take place. So instead, we went to Plan B, which is a, a much smaller group, private, invite only. We only have about half a dozen people who are involved, uh, but that did include me, and it also included the bloke and the chap from Bloke on the Range. Now, in the spirit of the Winter War theme, I am going to be shooting the match with an M39 Finnish Mos Nagant and a 1942 dated Soviet Tokarev pistol, uh, both of which are actually my own that I had imported over here to Finland for the match. If you're interested in that process, I have a separate video about it uh, with Les Winner from Polaris Logistics who actually did that import and export for me. Uh, the match itself was uh, generously sponsored by Sako and also by Varustelika. Uh, definitely check out Varustelika for winter gear needs. Uh, I made substantial use of their stuff when I wasn't actually on the range dressed in an original Finnish uh, Winter War period uniform. So, without further ado, let's dive right into the first stage. I don't even ask, do you have questions because you've briefed this already? <laughs> All right, 10 minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Shooter ready? Stand by. All right, this stage is actually pretty simple on paper. It is a series of shooting positions that you have to cross on skis. From the first position, you have to unsling your rifle, as I'm having a little bit of trouble doing, and then you actually have to use your ski poles as an improvised rest for the first shot. And at this point, by the way, we have a reduced silhouette at 150 meters. Now, for, for the subsequent shots, uh, you can use the poles if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, a little tricky operating the rifle while also holding poles when it's bolt action. In general, though, it's uh, actually they make a good rest once you get them planted in place, and that's not something I have a whole lot of practice with. Give it another try here. Yeah. I can't really decide if I'm going to try and use them. Like, do I take the time to use them and get a stabler position, or do I just hold them? Hit! At this point, it's a, a long enough target, long enough shot, that uh, using them is What's nice. What's the muscle? Uh, also, because I don't have a safety, I am... Wait for it. Hit! I am... Operating, I'm not chambering a new cartridge until I get to my You know, if this were just running, it would be no problem at all to, to finish this stage in the 182nd part time, but the skis really add a whole new dimension to it, uh, as to Mosin stripper clips. There we go, that's better. Now, once I get to the last rifle position, there's then another section I have to ski up to a little bit farther and do some pistol shooting. So we'll get to that in a moment. I'm taking my time on these shots because I really don't want to miss. Uh, it's not even so much the time it takes to cycle the action and get another shot. It, it's all about minimizing reloads. And if I can do this whole set, with one reload, which I cannot. I'm not going to be able to do it at this point. There we go. But if I could have done it with one reload, um, it would have taken a lot of, you know, it would have reduced my total time quite a lot. Yeah. If I hadn't had these couple of misses, I wouldn't have needed to take the time to do this. I can't really feel my fingers anymore. Ah! <sighs> yep. Yeah. 
Seriously, I can't feel my fingers. <laughs> okay. So it's uh, one, six, seven. That's not too bad. No, <laughs> that was exceptional skiing. <laughs> Not bad for a desert boy, huh? Yeah, gliding and everything. I seriously can't feel my fingers. I've never had that happen to me before, I don't think. <laughs> the feeling will come back, honestly. Seven penalties, by the way, are because there were six pistol targets, and I didn't get them, nor did I get the last right target. Shooter, are you ready? All right. Stand yep. by. Stage two. This is the Casarda drill with a kettlebell. So if you haven't seen the run I did with the stoner carbine, uh, we have two fault lines 15 meters apart, and you have to run this stage for the entire 180 second par time. And every time you cross uh, one of the fault lines and make a hit, you get a 10 second bonus to your time. We're using a 20 kilogram or 45 pound kettlebell. And the rules call for you to shoot prone. However, we shoveled out the center area where we're actually throwing the kettlebell so that we could actually find the kettlebell. And that left about an 18 inch tall snow burn. So at the end here, I'm able to actually go prone and have the rifle over the top of the snow. But for some of those uh, intermediate positions, if I go prone, I can't see up onto the target. And so that's why I'm shooting from sort of a sitting, kneeling sort of position. <laughs> Once again, the reloading is going to be a critical component of my time because of just how slow uh, both my pouches. This is I'm, I'm running an original Russian Mosinagant stripper clip pouch. And in fact, here you go. And the thing is just glacial. To actually get clips out of. And then they're finicky. All right, frozen reload. Tricky, and my fingers are frozen. Yes! That was actually pretty darn good. But be careful, do not miss. Uh, so six inches short. Uh, by the way, I'm pretty sure science has proven that grunting uh, does make the kettlebell go farther. There we go, that's close enough to a throw for six inches. <laughs> All right, that's two bonuses. Let's see if I can get a third. Just watching this is making me tired again. <laughs> Losing a little bit of my pep here. But I'm still making hits. That was a kind of lame throw. I'm also being really careful not to dump the muzzle straight into the snow. Alright, it's over. But I'm out of ammo again, so I have to reload. Can I do it? Nope. <laughs> so close. So very close. <sighs> All right, so one hit on each steel, one hit on steel. Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. For 180 seconds. Yeah. Stand by. This is another run it for the entire three minute hard time stage. And you get a bonus for every complete set of hits you're able to make. It's two rifle targets and one pistol target. And the whole time you're on skis and dragging a weighted sledge. We have a couple sandbags there and also a, a couple of steel plates under them. Go with the rest here again. Big help that was. All right, there's the 
first hey. target or two rifle targets. There's the second one. So, abandon the rifle here. Now I have to ski around the uh, the chair, which you already will tell me. Around the chair! Around oh yeah, the chair. right. Going around. I was the first person to do this stage, and so I get the uh, pleasurable task of trailblazing. Which kind of sucks. <laughs> Now, had I been paying attention, I should have come in here and turned 90 degrees as I was stopping. That would have made the whole the whole thing more efficient. But not really sure where this is hitting. Hi. There we go. Hit. Fortunately, <laughs> I managed to get a hit. That is a 50 meter pistol shot. It's uh, on a, a reduced silhouette that's partially obscured behind snow. So uh, it's not a trivial shot. Now we get to trudge all the way back on the skis. So I've now gotten one bonus. In order to get a second bonus, I must get my two rifle hits and then go back out and get another pistol hit. was shot number four. Uh, that was a miss too. Uh, but once I made that first miss, I was going to have to reload because I fired three times on the first set. Uh. Crummy reload. And out of time. <laughs> oh, that was not good. Nice. <laughs> yeah, not really. But I got one. Yeah. Good job. Yari, by comparison, got three. Uh, wow. It feels so much lighter now. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the match. I had a tremendous amount of fun. It was a real bummer that we weren't able to have everybody here uh, to have the full-on match. Um, Carl wasn't able to make it this year either, unfortunately. Uh, however, I picked up, we, we shipped over a What Would Stoner Do 2020 carbine, and I shot that on behalf of InRange TV. So if you're interested in seeing that footage, head over to InRange and you can check out that match video as well. Um, again, a big thanks to Sako and to Varostelika for uh, very generously sponsoring the match. Even, you know, the, the match expenses don't change that much whether there's six people there or 120 uh, and they stepped up and did it anyway so definitely check them out for any of your uh, winter gear needs thanks for watching <laughs>